So it has been a little over a week or so since that last update where I went ahead and was doing the how-to on all the different ballasting. And I have gone ahead and got all of these other lines through the platforms done all the way up to that north throat of the station. Kind of stopped it there because that's as far as the platforms go. It's actually a little bit further past the platforms. I didn't really want to get into all of the point work. Um, so I haven't gone in and filled in between the actual points there. I've gone up and around them and then I'll be using the same technique that I showed in that last video of pending in the PVA glue filling in the bowels. But all of these other ones are now done. Um, the areas are all patched up. One thing that I did want to come back on in that last video when I was showing how to do the point work, um, you know, I was showing how pantin some of the PVA glue, just neat PVA glue, sprinkle in some of the ballast, let that dry and vacuum away. When I kind of look back at it again over this last week when I've been doing um, other parts of touch up and stuff, uh, it did seem like there was probably a little bit um, too little ballast that was in between the ties on the rails. So I have gone back through and just painted it over with PVA glue on top of the ballast that was already in there, added in a little bit more ballast. Um, it is a lighter color. I think that's part of what's throwing me here as well. Uh, it is a lighter color than the ballast that's around it. And actually you may well see um, in other parts around the layout, there are lighter spots why I've gone up and added in some touch up. And that's fine, that's kind of normal. Um, again, because the ballast hasn't been soaked in that water PVA glue mix. Uh, it's just been kind of put on neat there. You will get a little bit of a difference in coloring. Um, once it goes through and then weather that ballast, it should be fine. It really shouldn't be all that noticeable. Um, but I do think that this makes a difference, adding a little bit more ballast between the ties and amongst the points. Points do all still work as well, um, so I'm quite happy with that. So now um, it's going to be cleaning up the rails, and this shouldn't be too bad. Um, I have actually accidentally knocked uh, my NC power cab and ran trying through the station, and they've they've kind of made their way through without too many issues. Um, because I'm I wasn't just you know indiscriminately pouring glue all over the rails, you know. And the, again, that last video that we had essentially you run the glue down between the rails and then on the edge of the rails. So the actual top of the rails themselves hopefully aren't too bad. Um, what I'm going to do is run around with a bright boy which is just a super super fine um, sandpaper almost but I mean it's flexible um, it's probably a rubber core he's fairly common for cleaning up the track run that across just to uh, you know get any kind of gunk that's on the top and then go over it with 90% uh, alcohol um, on, a, on a cleaning pad just run that over to clean it all up let that dry and then that should be good enough um, to then run through the locos, but all in all, quite happy with how all this has turned out. Um, you know, a little bit of line side details in between some of the tracks. This is starting to look a little bit bare up front here. Um, you know, there would actually just be the one platform in there. This would then be fret bypass, and then this is just uh, fret siding. It's looking a little bit barren here, but what I was planning on doing in and around this area anyway is dumping in um, some lengths of old rail, weathering those down, putting in some drums. Um, you know, I, I might even I think originally there would have been another line that would that would have come in there. I think back in the early 80s there was at least four lines came through here. Um, you know, so there is space in here where it would have been a disused line. Um, you know, so I might try and make in some remnants of where a line would have been. So looks a little bit bare right now. Um, but otherwise, the rest of the, the platform areas quite happy with how they go. But I want to go through and clean up this track so I can get trains running and make sure that's okay and the fun part is going to be trying to fit these platforms back in place um, so one thing that was it was a little bit of an oversight. I knew that I needed to do it and then didn't actually end up doing it because um, I didn't think it was going to make that much of a difference really uh, was marking out where the platforms actually came to um, you know, so you can loosely see, um, you know, it's forming uh, open space by itself, um, but I feel like the platforms are actually probably, uh, you know, quite a bit further up than where this ballast is actually set. There's not too much of an edge on it, but, um, you know, we'll see once these platforms go down. Um, I might not have, I might now have some fun trying to go through and cut back some of this ballast to get the platforms in place. Um, 
Otherwise, you know, I'd already been planning um, that these platforms would ultimately get glued down once this ballast was done. So what I might do is get them in place enough so that they're still positioned where they would be. They would only then be a millimeter or so raised up from where um, ideally I would like them to be flat on the baseboard. If I glue them down, weigh it down so that it's level at least, uh, then it shouldn't be too bad. But I'm going to go ahead, run around the bright board and the alcohol clean and get all this track cleaned up. And then we'll try putting in some platforms and we'll see what actually happens. Okay, so I had gone and laid platforms loosely in place. And what I had found was, kind of like I had suspected, I did have to come in and cut in. Now, when you're over on the other side, I don't think that's actually too bad. And this is, you know, still to get glued and weighed down, so it will press down. But I don't think that's actually too bad because you've got the ballast that's kind of coming up flush anyway. And I can easily then just paint in and add a little bit more along so I don't just have those bad gaps. There's a little bit of a gap down the end there where I've cut it. Um, but this was one way that I had come up with, like I said, I, I knew that I somewhat needed to go ahead um, and mark out platforms, but I also knew that I was probably still going to have to come back anyway. Um, so all I did was marked out on this one, um, led the platform in place, figured out where I would need to be, and this one actually needs to get cut back quite a way. So I just made a, a rough mark on the ballast where I need to cut into it. And again, down at the far end over here, you can see I've got to cut some. But that's it. It's actually not too bad. Um, and all I'm going to do is run along with uh, the Dremel, or at least my cheap $20 Amazon equivalent of a Dremel, um, but with the actual Dremel cutting bits on. So hopefully you don't just destroy through them. So we do it quick. Um, so I've already gone ahead and done this one, not gluing them in place yet because I actually would end up starting from the back and glue my way forward, otherwise I'm gluing this and then having to lean over to get all the other ones. But what I will do is kind of do, uh, just put the camera on a tripod and show just going ahead and cutting this just so you get the idea of what's actually happening. I'm going to move those locos out the way before I do so, just in case bits start to get thrown away. Um, and all I'm going to do is just run the Dremel following loosely along that black line to cut out what I need. If needs be, I can always then come along with a flathead screwdriver um, and just kind of scrape away a little bit extra. Um, you know, but from doing this first one, uh, that's pretty much sufficient that I've got enough clearance to then get the platform in place, run the coach along and make sure that there's room for the coach. And again, just come in and do a little bit of touch-up work. Even like around here, again, there's a little bit where I'll need to come back and do some touch-up work. Um, and that should be fine. So let's do a quick little video, um, uh, time-lapse video probably is for you as I go ahead and play with the Dremel and make a bunch of mess. an expert with a Dremel. I'm pretty sure it's actually moving in the wrong direction versus the rotation of the Dremel head for a part of that. Um, but the idea is just to go through and cut through. It does make a lot of mess, does kick up a lot of dust, and it is probably going to go through uh, those cutting discs. So I've done all of the platform that I need here, um, you know, but it has worn down that cutting disc quite a ways. Um, and if you think back to what you're doing here, you basically got all the ballast rock that is then hardened in that uh, water and PVA glue mix. So it is quite a thing that you're cutting through. Uh, you know, so just take your time. It's not going to be perfect. It's also kind of a little odd that you know you spend all that time making sure the ballast is good and then you're going ahead and cutting into it. But at least for the way I've got my, my platforms done, that's kind of just what I have to do. Um, now I can go ahead and then just run, like I say, a flat blade screwdriver underneath that, bring all that up, go back over with a vacuum cleaner again to clean it, and then we'll put the uh, platform in place and see if we need to do uh, any little bit more trim and adjustment work.
Okay, this is that second platform now in plus. Um, and you can see now it all fits in exactly like it should do. A little bit of touch up work, maybe just to then run back through and pin in a little bit of ballast just right in the edge here. It's not a lot, and it's uh, it's at a very weird angle in terms of being able to see it. What I'm trying to do as I'm doing this on, on both platforms really, is I'm trying to do the bulk of the cutting on that far side. So again, the bulk of the cutting was on this back side, on this near side platform, this middle platform again. Bulk of the cutting I've tried to do on that back side. Um, and the idea being is that for the most part, this is the orientation that you're going to be looking for. And so if I do need to do a little bit of touch-up work on the insides here, okay, that's cool. But for the most part, that now looks okay. It falls away. It's not perfect all the way around. You know, I spend a lot of time trying to get the curves on these platforms right. When you get all the way down to um, eye level on the edge of the platforms, they're not perfect, but they're good enough for me. So now we've got to go ahead and repeat the process on those back back platforms for the DMUs uh, they might get a little bit fiddly again just because they're a little bit narrow certainly as you come in here in between platforms uh, 10 and then platforms 11 uh, it gets a little bit a uh, little bit tight in there so I might have to cut quite a bit back um, so go ahead and start to mark those out and cut those away and get them in place and then we should have platforms in place ready to then probably get glued down I think at this point um, but I'm actually really excited to see what all the platforms look like with all the ballast down with some of the line side detailing that's in place as well um, because then I think it's going to start looking looking a little bit more complete. Okay, so this is now those back platforms marked out and ready to be cut and as you can see from all the black lines unfortunately um, no, not unexpectedly, there is quite a bit that needs to come out. Uh, these DMUs are tight, and it's also made up of three different card platforms. Uh, you know, there's one main platform that comes in here, there's another one for that section, platform 0 and 1, and there's another one that it goes in between 10 and 11, and then covers the back side of 12. So I was kind of expecting this was going to get fiddly just because of how it all goes together. Also expecting that there will probably end up being a good amount of touch-up work that gets done. He'll be really quick, it'll just be a little bit tedious. Um, but again, I'm looking forward to seeing this in play. So I've got... Uh, stack of the uh, the cutting discs ready as I feel like I'm probably going to have to change this out two or three times as I go around and get all of this done uh, and go around and get these cut up clean it up and then we'll have one last look of everything empty and then that next shot should have all the platforms neatly put in place. Okay so there are now the touch-up areas still to do um, and again, I'm going to start at the back and glue them down. So some of the platforms had twisted just a little bit as they'd had these stored for the last two or three weeks while I'd been doing all this ballasting. But now that um, the platforms were all in place and with the line side detailing and with the ballasting, this is now really coming to life. I am super excited to see this. I first started making these platforms... I think I was doing them before Christmas, I can't remember. Um, you know, it's been probably the best part of eight or nine months on or off. I mean, yeah, I've had a lot of other things going on as well, so I have taken breaks, but it's been probably eight or nine months in total since I first started making up these platforms. Um, always with the goal that uh, I would have line side detailing and the ballasting and things like those backboards in place. So. So they, they do still need to be uh, glued down in position and some touch-up work on that ballasting. I've got some buffer stops to go in. Um, but overall, very happy with how all of this is now coming together. Um, it is starting to make a big difference as to what Newcastle Central will end up looking like. You can start to really see things coming to life now. Um, so I'm going to probably take a break now. Uh, this has been a couple of nights work on and off, going through getting things cleaned up, getting the ballasting cut out for the station platforms and things like that. Um, and then you know, probably come back. It's actually a holiday weekend over here in the States, so uh, I'm off work tomorrow. Uh, I might be doing a little bit of work out here on this probably and in amongst other things, playing with the kids and, and smoking some meat as well. So 
Probably going to start back with this one, gluing this one in place and weighing it down and then seeing what touch up needs to be done on the ballasting and then just slowly working my way along all these different platforms and uh, hopefully it won't take too long to do. These should dry in place pretty quickly um, and then again the ballasting while that's drying uh, I can easily work around that just paint on, ballast, paint on the glue, sprinkle in the ballast and then vacuum up what's left just so that there's a little bit of a covering uh, and uh, should be should be good to go. So I'll come back uh, with this probably tomorrow or the day after um, and we'll uh, we'll have some progress as we make our way through it. Platforms all in place now. Uh, they are glued down and the ballast has been done up on the edging around them as well where we had to cut back with that Dremel tool. Um, so need to clean up in a couple of little spots um, but for the most part I think it blends in pretty good and again you know, once you go back over and would weather this, I think it'll look okay. There'll probably be an awful lot of oil stains and dirt um, that's going to build up back alongside those platforms. Um, so you don't have the perfect lip falling off like you would do, um, you know, like on the edging right here. But in reality, you probably wouldn't. Um, so I might actually go back over, kind of like I did with the point work, now that that's dried up. I might paint back over again one more time, sprinkle a little bit more ballast just to kind of build up another level. And overall, I think that works out pretty good. Um, so I'll do a, a quick little walkthrough of how I then go about gluing it. I'm going to go ahead and do this platform right here. Just put the glue down, weigh it down, and then show painting in around uh, with the PVA glue and sprinkling on a little bit of extra ballast. Yeah, so I probably has gone about a complicated way of doing all of this, but um, because these platforms, again, to reiterate, were made of card, I lifted them out uh, so that I wasn't going to get any problems and went ahead and cut through into there. Now what I'm going to do is glue these back in place just so that I can wear them down and make sure that there's no kind of flexing um, of any of those platform pieces. Make sure that they're nice and tight and then come through and balance it. So all I'm using is just some basic uh, Gorilla wood glue. I probably could use PVA glue, but I know that this will actually set a little bit quicker than the PVA glue would be. Um, yeah, and I, I've used this various different scenic stuff. Works out okay. Just looking at how much I've got left. Hopefully I have enough. Um, and so really, I'm going to just follow um, around the edge of this ballast because I know that this is pretty much where it's going to be now that I've marked it out and cut it. I'm just going to run a bead of glue all the way around in there. And again, this doesn't have to be super duper neat. You don't want to do a lot of excess, but just in case it's not going to be perfectly where the platform is going to be, it needs to be a little bit of a wide bead of glue. Don't worry about making too much of a mess going along the ballast because kind of like the white PVA glue, this will end up drying clear. This is one of the reasons why I like this particular type of glue. It does dry clear, you can't really see. And again, you're going to come along and probably weather this anyway. So it's not that big of a deal. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and wrap do a bit of glue along all the rest of it. Uh, speed up a little bit, then we'll come back and actually put the platform down in place. all of the glue in place now. So now I'm going to just lift over that platform in place. Try and line it up about as good as I can. I'm going to wiggle it a little bit backwards and forwards because again it is kind of tight along here to make sure that it's held in place. So I'll try and jockey this into position without creating too much of a mess. All that glue that we just put down. And this is where it gets a little bit tight. Excuse me for leaning over. Hopefully you're not getting a wonderful shot straight up my nose. I don't know if you like that kind of thing. So that's holding in place pretty good. I think this was where this platform twisted just ever so slightly. Okay, now one thing that you need to do is then go and red the kitchen. Make sure that you either A, tell the wife what you're doing, or you're really, really quick so that she doesn't see you, otherwise you have a conversation. 
we will get a look and you will have a conversation as to what you are doing with all the food from the pantry. And yes, I know this from experience. I got busted trying to get all of this out. And I got both a look and then we had a conversation. So, we can try and do this pretty quick to get this back to the wife before she needs to do some more cooking. Okay, so I'm wanting to do is just make sure that everything is weighed down on those edges to hold it in place. And yeah, you can see maybe it's on the end here. A little bit of that glue is coming up, but that's okay. Not coming up, but it's coming up the side, that's fine because we're going to end up painting over that with PVA glue and sprinkling around the bowels. What I'm more concerned about is just making sure that there's good contact just to push that whole platform down in place. Hopefully it is. I might actually do just put a big heavy bottle of glue on that far end because that's where it was kind of twisted just from sitting just from sitting without being able to rest perfectly flat and head it up and go all the platforms were not stacked on top but weren't, uh, weren't all laying perfectly flat so that one twisted just a little bit but hopefully that's that's good enough one last thing i want to do is grab one of the mark four coaches mark four coaches the longest ones i have i just want to run them down and make sure that i'm clear of everything i should be but there is a little bit of wiggle room like that if i need to so i'm going to grab a mark four coach and just make sure that i've got all the clearance i need See if we can get this Mark 4 coach on the rails without causing too many problems. There we go. Let's make sure that the cans aren't really causing any problems. A bump into the glue ball at the end, but otherwise that rolls freely. I'll over try and do it on other side of the platform. I just have to move some of these cans a little bit. Excuse me again. I'm getting to look up my nose. I'm just going to run around and bump it in the glue, but otherwise that all runs freely. So that's really all that I'm aiming for there. Just a little bit of glue down on that edging. Put the platform down in place. Put a bunch of heavy weights on it um, just to keep it there. We'll leave that for probably an hour or so, something like that. That's enough. I think I say with uh, with that Gorilla Glue, an hour is uh, pretty much enough to be able to hold it down. Um, and then once we're done, I'll just show a quick panning in that white PVA glue and then sprinkling in some of the ballast. So in the interest of time, I also went ahead and did the exact same process on that near side platform, uh, the one that was between you know platform six seven just to kind of wear that down. Um, it was very much just the ends here that were problems with a couple of cans just for fun hanging out in the middle there. Really this was just the ends of the platforms that need to be glued down, but the exact same process. You squeeze on some of that glue around the edging, lay the platform up, push it down in place, wear it down. And again, we'll give this about an hour or so, and then we'll take off all of the wet and go ahead and patch in the ballasting around the edging. And well, it's at the platforms on their glue down plus they've been left overnight just to make sure. So I mean they are solid now. They are not going anywhere, which is pretty much what I was after. And so now it's just coming through just with some regular white glue and just one again, an old brush. And all I'm gonna do is just paint in kinda of like when I was doing touch up work on the ballast in that last video. Just kinda of going around and painting in more carefully but again I don't have to be super precise about this you just don't want to get glue everywhere it will dry clear but you also have ballast that will stick pretty much anywhere where you have the glue so go around paint in the glue kind of hard to see on this side I'm doing here but I'm going to come around and do that other side so you get an idea I'll lean over and again all you want to do is just and down and get some glue in there and then you can come back 
And sprinkle the ballast in there, and that will then adhere to this. And it's not going to be a perfect siding, like I said a little bit earlier. What I might end up doing is coming back over these, the same as I had done with the points. Let it set, vacuum up the excess, and then come back over and paint on another layer of glue over the top and sprinkle on a little bit more ballast. And this is, you know, this is where this is starting to get a little bit tedious and boring now, is because I've got so much platforms that I've had to go through and do. And so this has, in general, ended up being a much longer procedure than I was kind of hoping for. A little bit of a mess here. I'm going to switch to a little bit of a finer brush. And I'll clean up before I sprinkle the ballast on. But this has been a little bit of a slower process than I was probably was hoping for. I knew it was going to be a little bit of a pain, but I feel like at least this way I know that the platforms don't have any problems with that glue getting soaked in or anything like that. So. I think it's been a slow but worthwhile process. And again, if I was just doing straight platforms, it would probably have been easy just to make them from wood. If I didn't have to have so many curved platforms, it might have been doable to make them from wood. But I, don't know. I think that uh, these scale scenes platform kits worked out pretty good. And again, all we're doing is just getting a little bit of the ballast onto that spoon. I don't want to be too, too liberal here because again, you're then just going to have to come through and vacuum up a whole bunch. So just sprinkling on enough that it covers over that layer of glue that we put down. The side that I had first painted in, and then now that's done. I'm going to continue on, do the rest of it, and come back and have one last look when that's all complete. And it's the rest of those two platforms all filled in. So again, kind of stacked up, grab a little ballast around there, let that dry. Uh, a couple of hours probably that will be enough. And I can vacuum up the excess, but that's all those platforms now done all on both sides. So when you take into account all of these platforms, like I say, I think we go back probably seven or eight months in building. I'm very happy now to see these in place with the ballast down, with some of that line side detailing in place. I actually have a few more of the um, line side relay cabinets ready to go in, and then I started work on some of the signaling uh, prototypes as well. Also got a little bit of cleanup work that I'm going to go ahead and do on some of the platforms just as I move them in and out. There's little pieces of the the edgings has come up, so I'm going to run around and clean that up while I wait for the glue on the ballast to dry, vacuum it up, and uh, and hopefully just clean up the rails quick and can start to run some trains again. Okay, so after a lot of track cleaning and then locomotive cleaning, these are all the platforms now in place. The ballasting is all done up to the edges of the platform. I also dropped in a couple of the extra uh, Parkland line side relay boxes on the end of some of the platforms as well. And then I got to start putting some locos back on, run some locos, so I can do a few running shots moving in and out now. But overall, I'm very, very happy with how this has turned out. I have to come down in. I think that looks pretty good. And again, once we get this weathered in, I think it'll really start to make a difference. But it is pretty cool now seeing. The locos parked up there at the platforms with all the ballasting done with a bunch of that line side detailing in place. That was pretty cool. So we move our way over to the north side of the station again. We are kind of stopped uh, right as we were coming to the throat of the station. But if we come and sit down, and again, I think that's starting to look pretty good now with some of that ballasting in place. One thing that you might have caught quickly here, um, this is an awesome piece of kit. I didn't have one, I went out and ordered it um, a couple of nights ago. So it's Woodland Scenics Tidy Track, so it's a rotto wheel cleaner. It says for HO scale, but HO and double O uh, will work exactly the same. Uh, so that's uh, that's part number TT4561, but just search for Woodland Scenics rotto wheel cleaner. 
and all it ends up doing is it'll huck into your track power here with a couple of alligator clips. You'll set the locker on top of there, and it's then picking up your DCC power. Um, or if you're running DC, I guess you could do that as well. Uh, all my lockers are DC, DCC, sorry. So you'll set your locker on top, um, slowly bring it up to speed, and the locker will move forward. Now we'll hit one of these buffers. Bring it a little bit of speed, a little bit more, and you just press this down. So I don't want to put a locker on so you can see what happens, but you push down on top of the locker. There's plenty of the videos that go into this in more depth, but it really is very straightforward and simple. And then you just kind of gently pull the locker back, let it run forward, gently pull it back, let it run forward. Do that for about 10 or 15 seconds. Um, and honestly, I thought that I had done a pretty good job of um, keeping these locos clean. Um, you know, the the DMUs were fairly new additions, the 108, uh, that 101, and then the 105 hanging out over there. They were fairly new additions, but um, yeah, even their wheels were pretty dirty. So you can see the pads, the cleaning pads, uh, where they've picked up some dirt there. Um, and that's probably uh, a combination of... Um, you know, when I've gone through and done this ballasting and cleaned it up, and then when I was cutting, so there's probably a little bit of dust and stuff that's gotten picked up, so. And then went back over all of the track with the Bright Boy Cleaner, then went back over all of it again a second time just to make sure, then went over it with some 91% uh, rubbing alcohol, it cleaned it all up, so. It has made a big difference, uh, this Roto Wheel Clean. I think I picked this up for about $25, including shipping, so. You know what that is, maybe it's 20 pounds. I'd been a little bit skeptical and I kind of held off getting one, but um, it's definitely made a big difference. The, the lockers were stuttering a little bit still. As soon as I ran them over this tidy track, um, everything was moving really good. So this has been kind of a, a long and fairly slow, tedious process. Um, I always knew it was going to be with ballasting, but it was one that I was very excited to be able to get done because now, um, you know, I really feel like uh, I'm starting to make a lot of progress, starting to accomplish a lot with that line side detailing. Um, I had held off doing the rest of the ballasting because I'm going to need to order a little bit more ballast, I think, um, before I'll be able to round out and get over onto uh, the top of the, the, the bridge on the north side of the station. So I'm going to order in some more of that ballast, but at least for now, um, I can go ahead and run some trains, have some fun, and just kind of enjoy it for a little bit. Um, and then I'll need to figure out weathering the track. I have also been um, tinkering around with some signals as well. Um, so I need to do a video of that in the next week or two. You see, you can see some of the progress that I'm making uh, with those Trentec signal kits. Uh, I can get into an Arduino just to kind of play around and get an idea of how I might modify this panel to do some of the manual um, and a little bit of automation on the lights. Most of it's going to be manually controlled, I think, um, just because it's really the operations in and out of, uh, in and out of the, the station here. So, I uh, hope you've been enjoying this, hope you follow along, hope some of this has made sense in terms of how you then glue in uh, the platforms and how you go in and then clean up around that with some of the extra ballast. Uh, so let me know what you think, uh, please do subscribe and follow along if you haven't done so already. Um, it's kind of cool seeing how many subscribers, well over 800 subscribers at the moment, so it's kind of full, you can also hit the bell as well. If you want to track along, get notifications as new videos come out. So hopefully I'll be back in a week or two, uh, have a little bit of a look at some signaling that I'm doing, and also might look at the little bit of engage stuff that I'm doing because of the show that's coming up here pretty soon that I want to try and get a new module ready for. So thanks for watching, take care, and I'll be back soon. Bye.